today we are going to talk about universal hashing. Before we define universal hashing, let's just recollect what we have looked at so far. Uh, we've looked at the balls and bins uh, framework and we analyzed balls and bins use, uh, under the assumption that each ball uh, is thrown into a bin that is chosen uniformly at random and the choice uh, of bins are mutually independent of each other. Uh, and we used this balls and bins framework to analyze hashing and we typically um, made the simple uniform hashing assumption. Uh, we assumed that uh, when an item gets hashed, it, it's placed in a location that's chosen uniformly at random from all the possible hashed locations. And uh, using this, we uh, using this assumption, we can invoke the ideas uh, from the balls and bins framework. So, for example, uh, when we uh, look at chain hashing, the worst case uh, performance of chain hashing correlates to the uh, the height of the most loaded bin in the balls and bins uh, context. We also looked at independence in the last lecture. In particular, we noticed that independence uh, is somewhat expensive, but if we relax the notion of independence from mutual independence to some k-wise uh, independence, uh, then uh, it's, it's cheaper. In particular, we looked at ways to generate pairwise independent random bits and pairwise independent uh, random numbers. And we also noticed that while limiting ourselves to pairwise independence, we didn't lose out too much. We were still able to uh, employ, for example, the Chebyshev's inequality. We've also observed in the past that hash functions can be expensive uh, and difficult to analyze and uh, uh, hard to implement and so on and so forth. And the problem comes from the fact that hash functions have to balance two requirements. On the one hand, hash functions should behave uh, randomly. Uh, they should have good randomness properties. For example, when you hash an item, it must be equally likely to be hashed into any one of the locations. And also, we would like uh, these uh, uh, hashed values to be mutually independent of each other. So that's good randomness properties. But on the other hand, when you hash an item, it has to always hash in the exact same location. So that's a very deterministic requirement because when you hash an item to store it and later on when you hash the item to search and retrieve it, they must be in the same location. Otherwise, uh, uh, it's not going to work. And so this, uh, this, these two requirements, the, the randomness requirement versus the deterministic requirement, always uh, brings about a bit of tension for us, uh, uh, something that we need to resolve. And here's an idea uh, for how to resolve this um, tension. Okay. Now, think about a single hash function. This is going to have good deterministic properties because it's a single function, so anytime you hash an item, it's always going to go to the same location. But when we choose a single item, it suffers on the randomness front because um, it's a single hash function. So how do we alleviate this um, situation? Instead of focusing on a single hash function, let's consider a family of hash functions. So we have this whole family of hash functions. When we actually need a hash function, we choose one, but we choose one uniformly at random from this entire family. So in this manner, we're it's easier for us to bring in uh, the the randomness requirements uh, for hash functions. Okay, but we need to be a bit careful when we do this. So uh, let's try to be a bit formal and let's try to define such a family with the correct properties that we require. Okay, so we're going to define what is called a universal family of hash functions, and uh, so it's going to be such a, a a family H and each uh, member of the family is a hash function that will map uh, a universe to a set of locations 
And such a family is going to be called a k-universal family of hash functions if the following condition applies. So now choose, uh, let's say you choose a hash function h uniformly at random from this family. And let's pick x1, x2 up to xk, uh, which is a subset of the universe. And this subset has to be of cardinality at most k. Then we will require the probability that each of the items hash into the same locations should be at most 1 over n to the k minus 1. If this condition holds, then this family is called a k-universal family of hash, uh, uh, hash functions. And remember, this condition must hold for a hash function h chosen uniformly at random, so the randomness is based on this choice of hash function, and it must hold for any subset of at most k items drawn from the uh, universe u. And you might think this is uh, this is a hard requirement, but it's actually quite easy to obtain. So let's, for example, focus on uh, pairwise, um, or, or rather, uh, a two-universal family of hash functions. So here's one way to um, produce such a such a family. So now our universe is uh, ranging from zero to m minus one, and the hash locations are ran ranging from zero to n minus one. And let's pick a prime number p that is larger than m. Okay, and let's define a hash function h. Uh, uh, with parameters a and b. Uh, this hash function will take an x, uh, x is in um, the set b, will take an item x and hash it into the location ax plus b, first you mod it with p and then you uh, uh, mod with m. Okay. Well, that's just a single hash function, but remember we have uh, parameters a and b so with where by extending our choice of values for a and b uh, a ranging from 1 to p minus 1 and b ranging from 0 to uh, p minus 1 we will get not just one hash function but a family of hash functions okay and this family of hash functions is a two universal family of hash functions and we're going to skip the proof but uh, it suffices for us to know that this is a two universal family of hash functions. And as you can obviously see, the construction is uh, quite straightforward. Um, let me just point out one um, minor technical detail. Uh, B ranges from zero to P minus one, but A only ranges from one to P minus one. So if we want to generate uh, or, or pick a, a hash function uniformly at random, we pick an A uniformly at random from one to P minus one, B uniformly at random from zero to P minus one, and that immediately implies uh, a choice of our hash function H A comma B, and that's our uh, choice of hash function. We can extend our theory of um, universal hash functions to something that's slightly stronger. So here we're going to define uh, what is called a strongly universal family of hash functions. It's again uh, a family in which each member is a hash function that uh, maps the universe to uh, the set V. And for this family to be a strongly k-universal family of hash functions, here's the condition that must apply. Now again, as before, uh, let's consider um, one of the hash func functions h chosen uniformly at random and let's assume x1 through xk is a subset of uh, the universe and this subset is at most of cardinality k and uh, now for any uh, choice of yi's uh, ranging from 0 to n minus 1 basically uh, yi belongs to uh, v uh, now the probability that x1 is hashed into y1 and x2 is hashed into y2 and so on up to xk uh, hashed into yk should be at most 1 over n to the k. Uh, let, um, my apologies, it's not 
at most 1 over n to the k, it should be exactly equal to 1 over n to the k. And this is the requirement of uh, uh, for strongly k universal family of hash functions. And quite obviously, this is a stronger definition. Uh, but the nice thing is such a family can still be constructed quite easily, especially if we all we require is um, a strongly two universal family of hash functions. So again, uh, how do we do that? Well, the universe, let's say, is ranging from 0 to p minus 1. And here p is a prime number. And uh, also, let's assume that v ranges from 0 to p minus 1. Again, we define each individual hash functions based on parameters a and b. So h a comma b of x uh, will take the item x and hash it into the location ax plus b mod p. Okay. And this family induced by uh, the various choices of a and b, uh, we can prove is a strongly two universal family of hash functions. Uh, again, we're going to skip the proof, but it's obvious to see that this family can be easily constructed. And uh, well, at maybe the family need not be constructed. The choice we can we can draw a hash function uniformly at random from this family very easily. All we need to do is draw two numbers a and b from 0 to p minus 1 and that implies the choice of the hash function. So before we proceed, let's uh, uh, ask ourselves some questions. I would like you to think about these uh, questions and uh, answer them for yourself so that you have a sense of uh, confidence about your understanding of uh, these um, uh, this universal family of hash functions. Now let us suppose H is uh, drawn from a two, uh, uniformly at random from a two universal family of hash functions. My question is, is H pairwise independent? Um, think about that. And answer the same question now under the context of drawing H uniformly at random from a strongly two universal family of hash functions. Is H now pairwise independent? What's going on here? Finally, um, is a strongly two universal family of hash function always also a two universal family of hash functions? Okay. Think about these three questions and um, make sure your understanding of hash, uh, universal family of hash functions is clear that way. Now we've defined these universal family of hash functions. How useful are they? Uh, for example, uh, our first concern would be their application in in a very fundamental uh, context. For example, the balls and bins context. Uh, what happens when we replace uh, the notion of balls choosing bins uniformly, uniformly at random with the um, with the notion of balls choosing their bins based on uh, some uh, hash function that is drawn uniformly at random from, say, a two universal family of hash functions. Okay. So let's think about that. So we have m balls, n bins. We use a hash function h to uh, take each ball and hash it into a particular location, a particular bin. And this H is drawn uniformly at random from a two universal family of hash functions. Okay. So what's our max load? And in order to understand that, let's define a random variable Y. Uh, and that's defined as the number of balls in the max loaded bin. And, and uh, obviously our question now is how, what is the bound on, what is the reasonable bound on Y? In particular, we want to know what is the value of k for which the probability that y is at least k is bounded from above by a half. And in order to understand the probability of this event, we're going to be a bit conservative. Let's look at the um, the bin with the k balls. Okay, There must be at least k choose two pairs of balls that collide just in that one bin. So instead of bounding the probability that y will be at, uh, at least k, 
we will be a bit more conservative and we will brown the probability that the number of colliding pairs is at least k choose 2. But this event, it is this, this number of colliding pairs needs to be modeled a bit carefully. For that, we're going to use an indicator random variable, uh, xij, and that's uh, xij is going to take the value 1 uh, whenever ball i and ball j land in the same bin. Otherwise, it's going to take on the value 0. So uh, xij is a very natural choice to, uh, uh, to model colliding balls. Clearly, the expectation of xij is at most 1 over n, because from our assumption that we're using h drawn uniformly at random from a two universal family of hash functions, we know that the probability with which ball i and ball j will collide is at most 1 over n. So the expectation of uh, the Bernoulli random variable xij is going to be at most 1 over n. And of course, our interest is counting the total number of collisions. So with that being the case, we'll define uppercase x to be the summation uh, of all these xij's. And if we look at it this way, the expectation of x is uh, simply uh, at most m choose 2 times 1 over n, which is at most m squared over 2n. And since we have the expectation, we can now apply Markov's inequality. And uh, using Markov's inequality, we get probability that x is at least m squared by n is uh, at most the probability that x is at least twice the expectation of x. This m squared by 2n, remember, is, um, is the expectation of x. And that's, of course, at most 1 by 2. So remember, our goal is to find the k uh, such that the most loaded bin has k or more uh, balls in it, right? So, and we were, we've been a bit conservative in uh, bounding that probability. Uh, in order to get our value of k, uh, uh, we need to uh, set k choose 2. Uh, to be at most m squared by n because k choose we don't want uh, we we uh, we were we're bounding the probability that the number of collisions is at least k choose two, right? So uh, of course k choose two we approximate that with k squared by n, uh, by two, um, and that leads us to the bound that k must be at least m times square root of two over m, and this is for an arbitrary choice of m. Uh, but if we restrict m to be exactly equal to n, we get uh, k to be at least square root of 2 times n. This result must be viewed under the backdrop that if we use uniform and mutually independent choice of bins for each ball, uh, then the height of the max load at bin is going to be at most uh, O of ln n over ln ln n. So this is significantly worse but it's still very general in nature. So it's worse, it's no longer logarithmic, it's, 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 it's proportional to the square root of n, but uh, we were able to get this result using, uh, using a hash function drawn uniformly at random from a two universal family of hash functions. So it's in that sense very general in its application. Mm -hmm.